The reason you're not feeling that you're making any progress on the guitar is because you were probably never taught how to practice the guitar. Now you're not alone in this. As a matter of fact, that was me for about two decades. Now this problem often doesn't happen in the first few years. The first few years, you, you do make some progress. It's difficult, you know, you've got to build your calluses, you got to learn some chords and scales, but you're still progressing. And eventually you get to a point where you have some of the core knowledge you need, like a few chords under your belt, the pentatonic scale, you can play a few songs, and that's when it happens. You just kind of plateau, and this can last, like I said, for decades. Now, the reason this happens, usually after a couple of years, is that we realize that the method of learning the instrument no longer applies at some point. So when we start playing, we might take a chord book and start learning the chords one by one, or maybe we take a, a few private lessons, and as a beginner, typically you will learn, you know, correct placement of your fingers on the guitar, just the core knowledge that everybody needs, and that's very standard, you know, step by step. And then, once you have that, it's time to make music, and the method is completely different. There's no step-by-step -step way that is going to teach you to become a unique individual. And so what happens is that typically, at that stage, a few people step outside of the conventional way of learning things and, and grow as, as artists and grow as individuals, as musicians, and they kind of become, I, I want to say, leaders in the way that they are just different. And then all the others, me included, we start imitating them and trying to becoming like them, which is cool, we can learn some stuff, but we're always going to feel unfulfilled if we don't get what these guys have gotten. There's a few things that are missing, and the good news is that it's really easy to fix and really easy to implement no matter where you're at. First of all, you need to know that you should culture curiosity. As an individual, as a musician, you should always be curious about things. Your education, your guitar education, should always be led by curiosity and questions. Your own questions. So let's say that you learn a lick, like this one for example. A series of questions that you might have could be, why do I like this lick so much? Or how could I use that lick in a song? Or how could I take this lick that I learned and play it the way that I want to play it? There's no right or wrong here, but the question is going to lead you towards a path of discovery. Those paths are your unique paths, and that's where it really differs from a pretty dry subject like mathematics, for example. Mathematics, you've got your set of rules. There is a method to get to a point. Eventually, if you're way advanced in math, you can have some creativity. But in guitar, this happens a lot earlier in the game, and that's why a lot of us get stuck for years. All right, so curiosity is going to lead you towards a different path. And this is something you absolutely have to remember, because typically, when you're gonna take a, a lesson from a private teacher or uh, taking a course online, well, those educators, me included, are going to have some kind of curriculum, some kind of plan because we need to have something, right? But at some point, you need to ask your teacher or stop the, the video of the course you're, you're studying or the YouTube video, whatever. You need to pause that if you have a question and start researching things. Go down those rabbit trails and see what you can find. Once you have those questions, there are actually three paths you can take. And these three paths represent all the things that you can learn in music. And in no particular order, there's the path of theory, which is the path on which you're going to try to understand the rules, trying to answer your questions in almost mathematical way. This is the answer, and this is why it works, or this is why it doesn't work. All that has to do with theory. You also have a path of technique. The technique path is going to help you execute all those ideas that you hear, and whether it's in your head or someone else playing, or the technique is just the mechanical aspect of playing the guitar. And then finally, we have what I call the path of self-expression. And it's in that path that you're going to take all the things you learn and try to make it your own, express yourself in a unique way, because as you know, music is a language. You have things to say musically, and you're gonna learn how to say them in the path of self-expression. The best way for you to understand is to actually do it together. I'm gonna take the role of a student here, 
This is a video lesson from Nick Kelly. So we're gonna watch it and we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna put the backing track on now and I'm literally just gonna go. Just what's that? Up and that's an example of a question, right? What, what is that? I'm curious about that. And the reason I'm curious about this is that it seems that Nick is playing two chords here, the A and the D, but the D that I know is not that D. He's not moving his fingers very much. So that could be a question. Now at this point, whenever you have a question, you pause the video or pause your teacher and try to think about why you have that question. What is the behind that? It's not just that you didn't know. There's gotta be a reason why you stopped the video. For me, it's because there was not that big finger movement and it seems to me that if I were able to do what I just saw here, it would make things a little bit easier, a little bit more contained on the fretboard and I wouldn't have these big moves like that. I want to achieve that. So let's explore. Now the three paths we can take, theory, technique, and creativity should really be kind of all blended together. It's not one after the other necessarily. We're just gonna try to explore this concept as much and as far as we can until we stop being curious about it. So maybe the first step is to try to recognize what Nick was doing. And because Nick is not showing me the tabs of the charts of those chords, I'm gonna have to do the work, which is going to touch on those three different areas of focus. Let's rewind a little bit here and see what we have. Back to A for two bars. Looks like this is the shape that Nick was playing. And I figured that out by using my ear, which engaged a little bit of my technique and, and self-expression too, because your ear is part of that. My technique for finger placements. And now I'm gonna ask myself, this shape right here, frets six, five, five, can I tie that to something else? Well, I can actually tie it to, to this full chord. I know this chord because I worked on that a while back, and now I can tie this to something known which kind of works on my theory fretboard knowledge a little bit. And I'm gonna continue exploring this by taking a look at the second chord, and I will ask myself the same questions until I feel that I fully explored the question and I have a good grasp on what is going on here. Now, just to be clear, you may not have had that same question, and that's okay, just continue. You don't have to ask a question on absolutely everything that you are studying. Just ask the questions when you feel that curiosity grow in you. For those of you who are complete beginners, I would advise you to still ask questions, but don't necessarily go down those rabbit trails yet. Have the foundations, know a few chords, know how to hold your guitar, maybe know your pentatonic scale, then start exploring. Now, a little while back, I asked some of my favorite online instructors to teach something new that can be used to start exploring these concepts. And this turned into a collection of over eight hours of high quality guitar masterclasses, which you can purchase. Actually, no, you can grab all of them for free right here. 